So when I thought of talking about the, the future of uh, transportation, what it's going to do, it's important to understand a very fundamental change that we're seeing happening in the 120-year-old DNA of the auto industry. And this is a complete shift that goes beyond the products into the entire ecosystem of how vehicles will be in the future. Now, of course, the simple areas are going to be the fact that they were all powered by petrol, and going in the future, it's either going to be hydrogen or electricity or a combination of these aspects to drive it. They're going from completely being mechanically driven to completely being electrically driven. That means 70% of a car is going to be completely different than what it was, not only because electrically driven with all computers and a host of batteries, and that's what happened to your smartphone, but also from a perspective of as you look at lightweighting and other technologies, it's going to be a complete shift in bringing in aerospace and other, other technologies into this industry in a very different way. Connectivity is going to change completely from cars being completely uh, standalone to be fully connected. And you're already seeing that in the social network and this would be in, into cars in a very big way as we look at it. It's about car-to-car -car communication. It's about you communicating to your car. It's about the you communicating to other users through their cars and the entire network of social network that would extend into the entire vehicle platform. Today, as we look at it, of having vehicles, one vehicle does everything for us, it's going to start to move into how you think of vehicles as being a complete solution. And so it's going to go away from you just owning a car to how you would use it. You've already got some models like Zipcar, but this is going to be far more different as you take it forth. 35% of people under the age of 30 in the U.S. said that they prefer not to own a car. That was completely different as you look at it which means new models will come up of how you integrate and use transportation in the future. From cars being completely manual, they're going to go completely to being semi-autonomous or autonomous. Now, you've got examples where Google's driven across the country, but think of simpler solutions. Combine this with the mobility solution and the electric vehicle technology together. And that means that if you would like to have a car at your doorstep, the last kilometer would come in which would be autonomous and being used. So the linkage of all of this is where I see the biggest strength in how we see the industry changing as we take this forward. This also means that you would manufacture vehicles completely different. It's just some images of our, of our new plant, which is run on solar energy in Bangalore. But the whole idea is if the car is designed differently, won't you manufacture differently? So for example, we don't paint panels anymore, they're pre-impregnant, we don't weld, they're bonded, and a host of other things because of all the computer systems that you have and the upgradability, it's almost closer to consumer electronics manufacturing than probably automotive manufacturing that's traditionally known as. And so the way it would be done in terms of not only being green, but flexible, adaptable, will be very important as you look at transportation taking this fall. Another key to me is, is how you would power these vehicles. And solar is an infinite source of energy. And while we think this is really in the future, this is something that actually powers vehicles today. So just to give you an idea, a three meter by three meter panel can give you free energy for life for your car, not a drop of fuel again. So you have 15,000 kilometers every year of energy. What you pay for it today to be installed on your rooftop is probably what you'd pay for fuel that will cost you the next 14 months or so. Available today. Now I think this to me is a game shift. If I go up on my house in Bangalore, I see almost every house around me today having water heaters that are powered by solar. I hope that five years from today, you'd have a solar panel that's along with it, and you're talking of not only having transportation that's green, but green through the entire value chain, creating your own energy in terms of looking and being sustainable about your transportation ways as you think about it. Taking this further, your car is today a source of energy, which means the fact that we have today a car-to-home technology, which your car can actually power your house in case you had a power failure. But it's far beyond that as you think of where the smart grid is going and we talked earlier about the connectivity of cars and taking that to the connectivity of grid. Anyone from Delhi here? All right, quite a few of you guys. So you know what happened last year in August, right? 
you guys had uh, some serious issues and power cuts there, and a whole grid, the northern grid fell down. Now, let me give you a scenario. Today, Delhi has 200,000 CNG vehicles. Imagine if 50% of them were electric. Each car could give you around 10 kilowatts of power back, which means you could have 1,000 megawatts of power going into the grid. So at 10 in the morning, when you reach work, and everyone turns their air conditioning on, and you have a big surge right through, you can actually use cars to power your grid. You could sell this energy to an electric company at peak power rates of probably 12 to 15 rupees a unit, and put energy back at 3 in the morning when it's available at 2 rupees a unit. So you're talking about not only sustaining the energy in terms of what the ecosystem would be, but you're also talking about potentially making money by having your car on this area. So that's, that would be great. You drive more, you make more money. You store your car more, you make more money on this area. The battery technology is completely changing on this front. So again, to give you a perspective, we had lead-acid batteries in the past. Today, with lithium-ion batteries, they're around four times lighter. They last around four times longer. So it's a, it's a game change from where you have. The way battery technology is going with the new lithium-ion, uh, lithium-air batteries, and other, ba uh, and other battery technologies that are coming out, you're talking about the size of a gas tank being able to power you 500 to 700 kilometers. And that's very much near in, in the near future as you look at these technologies. So this would completely shift the way people think of energy as you take this forth. On top of that, you today have fast charge technologies. So something which you see here is a, a fast charge system that could charge the vehicle in probably an hour. But today, testing at 30 minutes, and labs are already working at less than five minutes. So now when you think of a perspective that you could probably get a top up between five and 15 minutes, the size of a, of a, of a, of a pack that could be within uh, uh, a range of the size of a gasoline tank, then you completely see a shift on this area. Moving back to connectivity on this area, while the connectivity would have a safety issue, you'd also have a connectivity that would have a completely look, different look in terms of what the applications you can run and how the entire product would work through it. So you're talking about using your smartphone, your iPhone, or Android device, and completely controlling your car, everything from the AC to uh, driving the car in terms of how it would charge to how it would run through. The supposed little video where we lost that here. So, so when you look at connectivity, we see it completely different than where you are today on this area. You can today remotely diagnose your car. Our experience right now is that 60% of the time, we're able to tell a customer before he or she has a problem how to fix it. And also fix the car automatically at night. So it means you can completely change the way vehicles will be serviced going forth. And like the equivalent of having call centers, you're going to be talking about, on an online basis, being able to fix cars and upgrade them, since most of, the elect most of it is driven electronically and by software. So the shift what we're seeing is a complete shift into how you see mobility. It's no more about a car, but it's about the end-to-end -end system being green, from how you manufacture them to how you use them right through the end. It's about vehicles being far more connected to you in, in the ecosystem. It's about a convenience level right from the purchase to the acquisition to the usage, to the mobility solution systems that you would have in an ecosystem that allows you on this area. It's about being far more clever with cars having so much onboard computing power and autonomous driving coming in. It's about looking at a complete shift about your car powering your house. It's about being cost effective One minute in left. looking at this area of doing it. Cost effective on the fact that you can actually run your car on the sun without maintenance or anything. It's about the energy, it's about the ecosystem, and it's about a shift in industry that's going to come and change it. So to give you an idea today, the most successful companies are oil companies. But guess what? When a person buys a car today for around 5 lakhs, he spends 70,000 rupees a year or in the next 10 years around 700,000 rupees, more than what he spends in buying a car. That entire energy ecosystem has disappeared. It no more exists. It's being replaced by batteries, by solar systems, by connectivity, by telematics, and a host of technologies that are going to drive how this goes. So you're talking about a shift completely coming in. And the drivers of this are coming in from solar, from aerospace, from connectivity, from mobile spaces, and all of this coming in. And I think, therefore, 
This is not one, it's not an area where someone who's got 100 years of experience will potentially lead. It's an area probably where a lot of new players can come in and put their heads together because it's an area that's very different and you not necessarily have to have that advantage in the past.